I'm Ann Taylor Pittman, Executive Editor at Cooking Light. Thanks so much for joining today. I'm super excited to be here to share some fun Halloween treats. So I don't know about you, but Halloween is my favorite holiday. It's really fun if you're a parent and you have kids who are into it. And the treats I'm going to show you today are great for kids and for grown-ups alike. So let's get started. I'm going to start with some cinnamon cider candied apples. And these do have a little bit of a grown-up twist to them because they're made with um, apple cider and brandy. Um, the, honestly, the brandy cooks for so long that I'm totally comfortable serving these to kids, but you could totally leave the brandy out and just use all apple cider. Cinnamon cider candied apples, they're on the website. So over here on the stove top, I have some, it, you start with one and three quarters cups of unfiltered apple cider. That's the kind you get in the produce section that's refrigerated. It has really deep, rich apple flavor. And then a half a cup of brandy, and I've re reduced it down to three quarters of a cup, so it's a little bit syrupy. And then you take, here's where the cinnamon comes in. These are red hots. Those go in, and in real life, it takes a few minutes for these to melt. But they do melt, and they're what give um, the candy coating that gorgeous kind of uh, brick, col brick red color. So I'm not going to make you watch all of that, but you add a lot of sugar to that too. Look, we're making candy. It involves sugar. <laughs> um, and then you're going to stir that together. Now it's a lot of sugar. It's like a one and three quarters cups, but we're coating 12 apples and there's a fair amount of coating that's left in the pan afterwards. But you need that much in order to um, have enough to swirl the apples and get them really nicely coated. What level heat are you on right now? So right now I'm on medium high. That sugar is going to melt. Everything is going to melt down. And once it melts, then you would add, um, stick in your candy thermometer. So let me swap out pans here. So I have this pan, which um, I have my candy thermometer in, and this is cooked and it's already cooled down. You're going to take this mixture all the way up to 310 degrees. Um, that's hard crack stage, which means great for candy coatings. So if you don't have um, a candy thermometer, this is the way I used to make candy when I was a kid, um, using the, uh, is it the Better Homes and Gardens cookbook, the uh, checkerboard cover. You take a little bit of your syrup and add it to some cold water, and it should harden up into kind of a hard um, candy coating. My water's not quite cold enough, so it's taking it a minute to get hard. But that is uh, how it's you can so tell clever. if it's um, at hard crack stage. But a candy thermometer certainly works really well also. 310 degrees, and once it reaches that stage, then you're gonna take it off the heat and cool it down a little bit. Mine is at um, 230 degrees right now. It's still a little bit thick, and but not too thick, because I'll tell you, I let mine cool a little bit too much. I was practicing with these over the weekend and the candy coating was so thick. It was really hard and really <laughs> crunchy and my kids are like, we can't bite into it, it's too thick. So you want it warm enough so that the candy coating doesn't coat too thickly. So I'm just gonna take my apples. I have these nice dowels that don't have pointy ends on them. Um, you could also use craft sticks, you know, like popsicle sticks. And I'm gonna lightly coat these. I'm dragging the bottom of it over the pan because I'm trying not to get like a big thick foot at the bottom of it. Let me do another one. I'm just twirling in the sugar syrup. Should move this guy out of here. And it's just this beautiful, glossy, wonderful cinnamon candy coating. Do one with so when I was talking about craft sticks, it's just the little popsicle sticks you all know. These are snack size apples, they're really great for these types of treats. You don't want a huge, huge honking apple because it's a little bit too much to handle. This size, you usually find them in bags. This was a bag of 12, which was perfect for this recipe. So, again, I'm just twirling around. I like to leave some of the green part of the apple sticking up because the color contrast is so pretty. Seeing that gorgeous candy coating up against the green. So, so pretty. Can you add toppings to this and let it harden? Without Absolutely. Purpose? While the um, while the candy coating is still warm and sticky, you could um, add crushed up nuts or 
you know, coconut or, you know, some uh, little candy bits, cocoa nibs, if you want to get all fancy and, and really grown up with it. And so over here, I have some that I made earlier. And you see, like, it's a nice hard candy shell, not too thick. <laughs> Um, sometimes, like I said, that's what I was trying to avoid is the little bit of a foot. But if you get that, that's okay. You can just crunch it off with your teeth. More nice candy. And nice candy. <laughs> so, those are cinnamon, cinnamon cider candy apples. So, the next thing I'm going to show you is something really fun and kind of crafty and kind of cheesy, but it's Halloween, so it's a fun cupcake topper idea. We're going to make chocolate spiders. So I have some over here that I've made ahead, and I, what I love about these is that they're kind of 3D. It's like the spider is crawling on the cupcake, which is both gruesome and oddly adorable. So it starts with cupcakes. I've already made, I've frosted them. I don't like adding a lot of frosting because we're adding the embellishment here of the, the candy coating. I'm using these candy melts. I love these for projects like this because it's an, unlike chocolate, you don't have to temper it. It's uh, less fussy to work with. It melts beautifully and then it hardens up really nicely um, when you need it to. So to make these spiders, we have a couple of different steps. So I melted the candy melts. Here's a tip. I think you guys probably know this, but let me just show you. When you're transferring from the bowl that you melted in into a Ziploc bag, which is going to be your piping bag, have a bag sitting in a glass measuring cup or a bowl the um, edges folded over. That way it's easy to fill up the bag. The bag is not flopping all over the counter as you're trying to fill it up. I try to squeeze out as much air as I can. And then, like I said, this is gonna be my piping bag, so I'm gonna cut a little hole right here in the corner of the bag. And I'm gonna start piping sevens. And you'll see in a second, ooh, it's coming out. Sevens. Ignore these circles for now. I got a little too um, excited with my circles. I didn't need to take up the whole pan. So I'm making sevens. These are gonna be the spider's legs. And it's good to pipe some smaller sevens and some larger sevens, because you might want smaller legs and larger legs. Give the spider some personality. That's right. And pipe lots of extras, because some of these are gonna break and you want to have enough to play around with. See how nicely these candy melts behave? And they're all melted here. Okay, so you get the idea, sevens. And then I'm gonna do a few little round, kind of smallish circles. This is the spider's head. So that gives you the idea, sevens for legs, little circles for heads. Okay, and I'm gonna set, I'm just gonna leave that there for a minute and I'm gonna start doing a few um, spider webs. So the spider webs, that's what my circles here are for. So on the other side of the parchment, I just took, this was um, a mason jar. I flipped it over and this is the neck of the mason jar, made my circles because I cannot freehand this. I need, I need the, um, the guides there of the circle. So I have some white candy melts. And let me just do one to show you, give you the idea. So what I'm gonna do is do basically like a cross hatch on my circle. Is that the right word? I'm gonna divide it in four. Hope you guys can see. Okay, and then I'm gonna make more diagonal lines here going out to the edge of my circle. And then, once I have my little spoke thing, then I'm gonna start going on the outer edges, like this. Are you and big into crafting, Ann? I kinda am. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell. Especially certain times of year. And like, I like getting very elaborate. I love projects where there's a lot of detail work. I think it's a really fun and therapeutic sort of way to spend some um, spare time. One time for Christmas, oh, let me do another one, that one doesn't look great. Um, one time for Christmas, when my niece and nephew were, I think a year old, 
I wrapped their Christmas presents um, in just standard shirt boxes, and then I hot glued about 500 cotton balls <laughs> on each box, and then made little cotton ball snowmen. Um, so, so it was cute. like snow, and it was really cute. And so yes, I like projects. This one looks a little bit better. So you go, you know, ring around the outside edge, and then do another layer here, so that it kind of takes the form of a spider web. Okay, and so what you're gonna do with your sevens, which are your spider legs, and your um, spider webs, is you're gonna put them in the fridge until they harden up, and then you get something like this. Now, I already have a bunch of spider webs over here that I did like this. So they just peel off the parchment and you just place them on your cupcake. Wow, look at that. It's a great, yeah, holds up really nicely. Um, and so I have several over here that I've done. Okay, so let me show you how you start assembling the spider. In my household, we say spider. That was from, what movie was that? Uh, it's a Will Ferrell animated movie. If anyone out there remembers <laughs> Spider. Um, okay, so remember I said this is the spider's, whoops, this is his head. Or maybe it's a she, maybe it's her head. Okay, and then I'm just gonna blob on kind of a big circular body with the candy melts that are still kind of warm. Okay, and that gives me something to work with here. And then I'm just gonna start taking my sevens. And because this is wet and because I have some icing on the cupcake that gives me something to stick the legs into that will kind of stabilize them. So I'm gonna use kind of a smaller leg for the front. And believe me, you better use eight legs or some child will call you out on it. <laughs> some of our so. users know the movies at Megamind. Yes, Megamind, <laughs> thank you, thank you. Carrie and Sabrina. Thank you, Spider. Um, okay, so, yes, this is a little bit time consuming, but it's so fun and so cute. So cute. Like I said, kind of gross, but cute at the same time. And I love, like I said, the sort of 3D effect of having the spider look like it's crawling on the cupcake. So there you go. Spider cupcakes and cinnamon cider candied apples. Fun Halloween treats. Hope you guys have a great Halloween. Thanks so much for joining. Have fun.